sector on each year. A staggering 47,000 people suffer from kidney failure, leaving thousands in need of a transplant, but only 2,500 life-saving transplants are carried out each year due to a chronic lack of donors. Now, as part of National Transplant Week, we're joined by soap star Stefan Booth, who lost his mum to polycystic kidney disease just a few weeks ago, and he joins us alongside Dr Chris. Thank you both for coming in. Um, first, Steph, I'm really sorry about your loss as well. Well, thanks for having me in. I, I, obviously, uh, death is inevitable for us all, but I thought it would be nice to bring something positive in, yeah. in, in the light of mum's death and, and kind of raise some awareness for the reasons, uh, the contributing factors to, as to why she, she passed away. She'd been poorly for a long time, hasn't Yeah, she? you met her on Dancing on Ice and, and snuffled did, yeah. donuts together yeah. a few times, didn't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Um, she was, yeah, there she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was an absolute cracker, my mum. Um, really, uh, it's, it's quite ironic that this, is, this has happened the way it has literally a month before she died. Uh, I was contacted by the kidney charity, Kidney Research UK, and they, um, they said, look, you probably won't have heard of us before, we, we don't tend to advertise that much, but we put all of our, our funding into researching to try and find a cure and to treating people that have kidney disease. And uh, it was staggering what I've learned over the last, over the last uh, week. Mm. It's almost an epidemic in, its, in, its, uh, in the amount of people that are affected. And also, you know, the, the, it is Transplant Week at the moment. It is, and, yeah. Uh, and the sort of concentrating on that. Um, just with your with your mum, I mean, she she had you were thirteen when she had a kidney transplant, weren't you? Yeah, I think it's it a very long time ago. It's, yeah. it's around about that time. So she had her anti-rejection pills, which unfortunately took its toll on her bones and gave her weak bones. Yeah, it, it gave her it accelerated her arthritis quite considerably, and it's it's it was it was never a sure thing as to whether she'd pull out of the operations as well. So we're very aware of her. The unfortunate part about age. that was that that it was the indirect uh, really the, co the cause of her death because she she had uh, a bro broken bone went into hospital was going to have an operation then yeah. got an infection and because her immunity was so low then that was sadly what took her Just, life. Yeah it's amazing you spend you spend such a long time defying death and then something simple happens like a broken leg and you know you're gone in, in five days. How is her life affected by the polycystic kidney disease? It, it was affected massively um, for some people it's quite it happens quite at uh, quite an aggressive rate some people it doesn't um, it, but the, the, the worst thing about it is that you tend not to know about it until you're in the final stages of, uh, of renal failure. So the 47,000 people you're referring to um, are the people that have turned up in hospital uh, that are in real dire straits. And transplants are really good, um, but they, uh, and so is dialysis. It, it prolongs, it buys you time. But um, they need money to find a cure, and it's, a, it's, it's massively important, and that's what I'm really campaigning for actively now, because they're so close, they found the gene, and they just need to look at it a bit more closely to kind of find the right medications to, yeah. to, to fix the problem. They're not far off. But how did my mum, how did my mum um, suffer on a day-to-day -day basis? It, it affected her movement, it affected her, her blood pressure. I mean, your kidneys are, are vital, they're a vital organ. They, 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 they clean all the waste out of your body, so, and they regulate your blood pressure, primarily. Uh, they do other things too, but without those two things, you encounter a a massive amount of other problems as well. Yeah. You've been to King's College, haven't you? You, you yeah. went down and met the people who yeah. were doing the research we went and on working. Monday. Yeah, I got fried with information and loved it. <laughs> we, we played with liquid nitrogen and we looked at, at you know, little cells and, and, and the projects they were working on that were absolutely incredible. And it's made me feel... Um, I, mean, I knew a lot about mum's problems mm. when uh, mum had polycystic kidney disease. Um, I knew a lot about her problems when uh, growing up, and that's something that I've. I, you kind of in your, you know, it's in your family, and it's yes, immediate. Yes, of course, you a huge impact. On yeah, you kind of you gleam but, information. So we've got two amazing. things here that the two areas because you're you're looking certainly looking at the funding and research into into mm. renal disorders and diseases because they haven't got a cure. But also yeah. the, the the transplant as well. Do you think our system is right that we we have to opt into our system? Do you think you should opt out of transplants and say right, okay, well I actively because a lot of people either lazy or they need a bit of a push. I, I, I personally, I needed a push. I'm, a, I'm quite happy to say I am a donor. You can have whatever you want. Um, but uh, not until I'm dead, hopefully. But you can have whatever you want. But, but, I, but, yeah. I, but I would say that, that it would be, it's a lot easier if the decision is made for you. If you say, right, OK, I don't want to do it rather than I do want to do it. Personally, I'd love that. Having been at the receiving end of someone who did donate their kidney, having waited two years and mum was just on the cusp of dying at the point where she, uh, I mean, 20%, I think, of people on the waiting list never make it to mm. transplantation. 
90% of all the people that are on the general transplant list so waiting are waiting kidney, for a kidney. It's yeah. massive. Um, I'm in support of that. I think that's, that's a great yeah. idea. But I think more so it, it wouldn't be such a problem if people were encouraged to think about the mortality and how much they could help other people. It's just a, it, it, it wouldn't take much. Is it, who's, who's at risk then of developing something like polycystic kidney disease? Because if people realise they were at risk, I think they might also be more yeah. keen to kind of tick that box. Yeah, well, I mean, that... Stefan knows he's at risk because his mother had polycystic uh, kidney disease and, uh, you know, there's a genetic tendency. And he's just told me before the show that uh, your brother and sister have been diagnosed. My brother and sister, Tammy Damon, have it. I don't. Um, and yes, it, it can be hereditary. You get a one in two chance, typically. Of, Have you been of tested it. for it? Yes, I've been scanned twice. Yeah. Um, but some, for some people, it can just, it can just, you're, you're, the, the cells, polycystic kidney disease itself is a cell mutation. Your, your kidneys can just suddenly start to misbehave, and you can. What do you look for, Chris? Yeah? Well, you yeah, with all kidney disease, you know, you don't get symptoms. You know, I would call kidney disease the whole topic is a Cinderella disease. You know, it doesn't get the money for research, it doesn't get the publicity, etc. Mm. And and with kidney disease, uh, you know, it, it it creeps up. It's very insipid. Changes occur in your body. You don't feel it. Could it be at any age as well? Yeah, any age. Yeah, they and, call it the silent killer, don't they? Silent killer. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is now. Therefore, because you don't know that you've got it, who's at risk? This is more important. And people with diabetes, very much at risk of kidney mm. disease. 40% of diabetics will get kidney failure. People with high blood pressure get kidney disease. And people who are overweight. So if you're in that group, diabetic, um, um, Overweight. Overweight and um, high blood pressure. You need to get checked with your GP. Right. And some things you can work on, some things you can't. You can't sort your diet. I mean, are you talking about type 1 or type 2 diabetes? Type here? 2 diabetes in type particular, because yeah. that's more common. But, you know, the interesting thing with transplants, 96% of us would accept an organ if we needed it. 96% hmm. of us won't donate an organ. Now, there's my donor card. I've carried it for 17 years. Go and on. They, can, they can take everything from me. I mean, look, when you're dead, your organs are no use to you, and your body could save nine lives. Not just mm. kidneys, so, it's heart, liver, so etc. So as part of the um, National Transplant Week, you want to get everyone to kind of agree to get a donor card, and also you want to it's a start, start raising funds as well. For yeah, firstly, I, I'd love to encourage uh, people to carry a donor card. I think it's a fantastic thing. I would like to stress, though, it doesn't provide a cure. It buys time. It's it you, you it it's a a, a a donation a transplant a, sorry, a a donated transplant has a limited shelf life. And what I'm going to campaign for is a cure. Um, it's something that is very deeply rooted in my heart. And I think you know I'd love to on, have the chance on live TV to say they need more corporate sponsorship. Uh, they need more people to to really dig deep and try and try and find a cure. If, if everyone out there is looking for a a, a way to raise funds, yeah. you know, choose Kidney Research UK and, and, and really, you know, go for it. We'll put, um, we'll put all the details on our website Thank for anybody you. who wants to, wants to donate. We'll mm. also put yeah. information on how you become a donor as well. Those, as we said, those two things on, mm. on this particular story of, of yours, you mm. know, so two very similar but separate stories, raising money for something that needs a cure and also for looking for in this transplant week, encouraging yeah. people to become Great. a donor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, coming up, Travel Gadgets with Steve Wilson back after the break.